Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, um, we've been getting a lot of messages um, of late about feeding. Um, how often do we feed our spiders? Um, what do we feed our spiders? All this sort of stuff. And um, it sort of occurred to me that there's, there's, there's getting more and more beginners that are coming into the hobby. You know, the hobby is becoming very popular. and um, we're getting more and more people entering the hobby. And one of the things that, that always strikes me is we can, um, it's funny how when you've been in it a long, long time, you sort of take for granted many, many things. And uh, feeding is one of them. Now we've touched on feeding before in our videos and different bits and pieces. And over the years, we've worked out what we feel is a really good way of feeding our spiders, keeping them healthy, and also getting us to enjoy our spiders, which is what it's all about. We really want to be enjoying our spiders. And, you know, we, especially things like our fossorial spiders, some of them, some of the arboreal stuff as well, you know. We had a friend up here um, only the other day, and he came into the room, and uh, he was like, I don't get it. All your spiders are out, you know. Most of our pokies were all out and about on show and they were quite happy sitting there while we were just mooching about, talking and, and doing stuff. And uh, he said, I just don't get it. He said, there's, there's all these spiders and they're all out. Pokies, for example, many, much of the literature that we see on pokies is stating that um, they're very light sensitive. They don't like the light. You've seen our enclosures. We have lights on all of ours, and uh, they're still out. They're out basking in the daytime. You know, they're, they're having a whale of a time. Um, fossorial spiders, we quite often see them out on the entrance to their burrows, but not only just their legs, quite often they sit fully out in the open, and they're perfectly happy, you know? Even when we come around to do bits and pieces, the vast majority of them will actually just sit there and let us do whatever it is we've got to do. Um, occasionally we do get the odd nervous one that disappears, um, but we can often still, we can often deal with that. Um, as we saw a little while back with our Serpagopus lividus, the female, she wasn't happy um, when we got her. She was really freaked out and she'd done a lot of running around, very, very um, agitated spider. And um, we put her in a fossorial setup and she is now settled right down. She's calmed down and we see her now. At the moment, just her front legs poking out from the burrow. But give it time, she will venture a little bit further. Now, a lot of this is down to feeding, how we feed and what we feed. So what I'm going to do, we've got a little bunch of spiders here. Some of these are fresh come in. They've just come in um, from a collection that came through. So I thought that would be an ideal time to actually look at some of them because they've been kept in a slightly different way to how I keep mine. Uh, some of these uh, are mine that have been long, long-term captives. And we've also got some males here, which I thought would be interesting to have a little look at the males as well. So basically, how do we feed our spiders? Well, the truth is, we don't have a set regime for our spiders. Now, I've mentioned this many times. We do not have a set regime. Now you'll see a lot of people they will have like um, every Saturday is feed day for the spiders so they go around they feed all their spiders every Saturday without fail you know and quite often they'll not only feed one item they might feed two or three items you know you, we see the posts come up all the time on Facebook you know oh my you know my spider's really really hungry it's eaten three or four roaches today this is not a particularly good way of going about it, in my opinion. I, not if you want to see your spider. So what we do is we don't feed our spiders in any kind of regime. I often get asked, have I got a list? You know, do I know when my last spider fed? Well, the honest truth is no. I couldn't tell you when each individual fed. There'll be a couple there that I think, oh yeah, I know, I know that one fed last week. But most of them, I couldn't tell you when they last had their last meal. And this is because we wait until we see our spiders. Our spiders tell us when they're hungry and they'll come out 
they'll sit at the front of their burrows or if it's an arboreal spider, quite often they'll come out and we'll see them hunting. So we know that that spider is now hungry. Now we don't always feed immediately. If it's a spider that we see regularly a lot, then I will give it food straight away. I will offer it food and see what it takes. Quite often I'll tongue feed these particular spiders as well because I like to be able to get a gauge of how they, how they feel. You can feel how strong a spider is when it's pulling on something that you've got forceps onto. So it's a, another way of just checking to see how healthy your spider is. Um, if it's a spider that I haven't seen for some time, I might well leave it for another week before I feed it anything. So I want to see that spider hunting around. I want to see it searching for food. You know, it needs to get some exercise. You know, when we've not seen them, they literally are tucked away in their burrows. So it's a good thing. In the wild, they wouldn't venture out and grab a piece of food straight away. They might have to hunt for a week or two before they finally get lucky and get food. So it's one of them things. We make them work a little bit for their feed. For their feed. Now, when it comes to what and how much, that all depends on the look of our spider. So we are going to have a look at a couple of spiders now. Um, we're going to show you a couple that are a little bit on the large side, a little bit, f not, mm, I wouldn't say fat, but they're pretty full. And these are very common, commonly kept spiders in the hobby. So what we can do, we'll have a look at these. Now this here, this one here, I'll turn it around this way. Here we go. Now this is a Somani. This is a female Somani, and it is in absolutely beautiful condition. You can see this by the colouring. It's got really, really good colour. Now, you can see the darkness of it. It's, it's in really, really good order. Now, the abdomen on this spider, you can see it's quite large. It's a little bit bigger than the carapace. Now, we often get told within the hobby, that your, your spider's abdomen, you should aim at getting it around about the same size as the carapace. Now, for this particular species of spider, if we was to get her abdomen the same size as her carapace, she would be underfed. It would be too small. So with a terrestrial spider like this, the same goes for all your brachypalmas, um, all of that type of spider, most, in fact, most, of your terrestrial spiders, their abdomen needs to be a little larger than the carapace. So this is what we're, we're aiming for. This is what we're looking for. Now she is in really, really good condition. Now when it comes to feeding, we are looking at getting, um, oh, let me move this over a minute camera lady is sort of like dancing around here. If I turn this around, and I'll put it down here so it should make it a bit easier. The, um, as we were saying, she is in really, really good condition. Now, when it comes to feeding, this girl will only need to be fed maybe one good sized roach, one decent roach, um, and by that, I mean one about this sort of size. We're looking at like a medium sized roach, which is like this size. Now that's that size roach, that there is about the size of her carapace. Yeah, we can see that. It's about the size of her carapace. Now that, is an ideal size, and it's not a particularly fat one, it's quite a slim one. That is enough, and we will give her one that size maybe every three to four weeks, and that will maintain this abdomen. It will keep it in this, in this nice shape and keep her in this perfect condition. So this is what we're aiming for. This spider does not need to be fed you know, once or twice a week. 
we are looking at feeding this spider once a month, you know? Bearing in mind, this is an adult spider. So she's done pretty much all her growing. She doesn't need to be doing anything else. So we are just looking at a maintenance diet with one roach a month. And she won't lose condition with that. She will stay in the same condition. That's how she's been maintained for the past year. She is of a breeding age, yeah. And also as well, with her abdomen the size that it is now, she would be fine. If we were to breed her, then what we would do is we would up the food a little bit just to take the edge away from her. But what you've got to remember is this type of species of spider has a very, very slow metabolism. Very, very slow. It's like the brachypelmas. The, the common joke in the hobby with the brachypelmas is it will probably outlive you. You know, they take forever to grow from little to large. And, um, and it's because their metabolism is so slow. Very, very slow. Now, this is another real firm favorite in the hobby. This is a Chalcodes. Now, this is another interesting state. If we have a look at this one, we can see that her abdomen is actually really, really quite big. And it's very rotund. It's very, very rotund. And again, it's much bigger. It's a third bigger than her carapace is there. But you can see, once again, look at the colouring of this spider. She is in very strong colour. She hasn't molted in, oh, must be a year, maybe longer. She's not molted. So she still looks like a fresh spider. She's looking absolutely beautiful. Now, um, as you can see, the abdomen is almost as deep as it is wide. It's very, very full. Now, again, this particular spider, they do carry quite a decent sized abdomen. There could be another reason. She is a, an adult female, and it's quite possible that she's actually producing eggs. Because, again, this spider hasn't been fed in about three or four weeks. Um, so she's probably due a feed, but then quite often she will fast for three, four months at a time, and she won't lose any condition. She will stay the same as she is now. So feeding really is as much about the species of spider as it is anything else. And this is where we need to come away from the old adage of, um, you know, when people ask, how often do we feed our spider? It isn't a black and white question and there isn't a black and white answer so you know with a spider like this it needs to be fed literally infrequently and it will still maintain perfect condition um she in any if anything is she is a little bit on the large side you know she's taken on all of the goodness from them roaches and she does absolutely nothing so she doesn't expel any energy so it's um it's it's that particular thing she will hold on to everything so we can afford to feed less this is the thing now we're going to look at another one here this is a different type we've looked at two terrestrial spiders we've got another one here this one is actually being prepared for breeding um, and this is a baboon spider And this is the Ceratogovus meridionalis, or the Zimbabwe grey. Very, very pretty spider. Now look at the difference in the body shape compared to the two spiders that we've just seen. The Chalcodes is a very round, rotund sort of spider, quite a stocky spider. Look at this one. This is another adult female. She's very leggy. She's very long. And her abdomen is a completely different shape compared to the other two that we've seen. Now these are a semi-fossorial um, spider, so they will dig down and hide away. They will, to some extent, also live off the ground as well, so semi-arboreal. You know, because of the habitat they live in, this is, the, this is what gives them that nature. Now if you look at the abdomen on her, her abdomen is as long as her carapace and her fangs. 
But again, you'll see the carapace is much smaller than her abdomen. So what I'm sort of getting at here is the old adage of about following the size of the carapace is not strictly true. We want to be a little bit bigger than the carapace. Everything we've seen so far, the abdomens are always bigger. Now you can see here, she has got really nice color. She hasn't long molted this one. And we can see here as well that there's a nice sheen to her abdomen. She's looking in really good order. But what we're doing is we're plumping her up a little bit. We want to get a little bit more food into her. Purely so that when we introduce our male, she's not got such a strong feeding um, attitude. We want her to be a little bit more relaxed. And as you can see, for a baboon spider, you think I'm moving this around above her all the time and she's being very well behaved. She doesn't feel threatened by this. She's doing really, really well. And you can see how calm she is. And this is what we're trying to promote in our adult female breeding spiders. We want them to be calm because this gives our males far better chance of survival. If she was really, really hungry, then we would have a problem. When we put our male in, she might just see him as food and that'd be the end of it. So we have to be a bit careful. Right, now we got, um, here's another one. This, this is another one that's, that's showing really, really good uh, size. This is what you want to be aiming for. Now this is a Vagans. And you can see there, again, really strong color, nice color, a really nice clean abdomen. All the hairs are on the abdomen, so this is showing that this is a spider that doesn't get stressed out. It's really well behaved. They can be a little bit jumpy, but she's she's quite quite calm at the moment. Now she's in temporary housing at the minute because this is another one of the ones that's um, come back and it needs to be moved over. Now in terms of food, we will feed this spider. This this spider has a slightly stronger feeding response than the Chalcodes or the Somani and these have a higher um, metabolism so we can be looking at feeding her an adult dubia roach um, probably every 10 days or so and she will she will maintain on that particular thing and this is purely down to the fact that they have a much higher metabolism a bit like the baboon spider they got more of an energetic type of thing about them. And they can be quite sort of um, flighty and quite what I would class as a sort of wired. So they take a little bit more food to maintain them, to keep them going. Now, if we look at a male, we're going to look at this one here. This is an Aminia male. Again, a very, very pretty spider. A little bit jumpy, a little bit, a little bit flying about. We'll see if we can have a look at him without him disappearing. It's one of them. It'd be nice to see him outside. Right there, you go. Look at that. He's gone straight into fret posture, which is not really what we needed to see. But we get a good chance to see the difference between the dimorphism between these and the females. The females are jet black. He is grey. He still has the orange bits on his legs, but he's grey. Now, I don't think we can... Oh, you can just about see his abdomen here. Very, very small abdomen. And one of the things that happens is, is when our males mature, their abdomen shrinks down a little bit. So when they come out of their molt, they have a smaller abdomen. Now, another thing that we, we often hear in the hobby is that males don't feed. Once they mature, they don't feed. This is absolute rubbish. And uh, many of our males will consistently feed throughout their, their lifetime as a mature male. Now, this little guy here, to maintain him, we would be looking at giving him um, male red runners. And uh, occasionally, if he, if he goes a little bit 
a little bit too thin, then we will, here he goes, now look at that. Now he's moved over. You see how he's calmed down now? You can possibly just about see that abdomen there. I tilt him. You can see the orange on the legs. But it's that abdomen we're interested in. I'm just going to touch him, see if we can get him to move just a touch. Don't want him flying out. There we go. And you can just about see now what we're saying about the abdomen. It's very, very small in comparison to the spider. And this is something that's quite unique to males. So with a male spider, we tend to offer our food on a weekly basis. But we keep the food items small. So we would only be giving something like this a minia. We would only be giving it um, red runners. And uh, we find quite often or not the male red runners are the ones that get these guys feeding because they're winged and they're very active. The reason we feed our male spiders on a weekly basis is because they are constantly looking for a female, which means they're burning up energy. So they tend to eat to maintain themselves. Now, I say it's absolute rubbish when you hear people say that males don't feed. They certainly do. We have a blondie that is coming on for about two and three quarter years old now as a mature male, it's nearly three years old. And that thing still feeds like it was a youngster. It absolutely hammers food. Very, very strong feeder. Now, if we're going to go the other opposite end of the scale now and look at something very, very small. This is a, this is a Villicelli male. Here we go. Typical, they hide their abdomen. See if we can get him to just to walk out. Whoa. These are very fast, so we don't want him running away. You see how he literally checked the brush out then? Yeah, we're going to try and get him to walk. Here he goes. And you'll see that there is a very, very tiny abdomen on this little guy. Very, very tiny. Let me zoom in on him a bit. There we go. Now you can see there, he has got a tiny, tiny little abdomen. Now with these guys, the, with the very small stuff, the dwarf stuff, we would still be looking at offering food once a week, but we'd be looking at doing it in terms of very small crickets or um, baby red runners. They do well on them. They like that time of that sort of size thing. But you can see the abdomen is very, very small. This guy will still feed. It's more important that with your males that we keep them hydrated. So we make sure that they have water and then that way we can do them there. This guy is in this pot at the moment just purely so we can see him. But we can, um, when they're on their normal thing, we can give them water and they'll take that. And they, that's the most important thing is we keep that water going. Hydration is the key to the success of males and keeping them, keeping them in a good order. Now, we've got something else here that's a little bit different. Um, and it might show um, how things look if overfed. Now, this here is a forest scorpion and we haven't had this scorpion very long and um, when it came in we were told that it was um, possibly gravid it's not done anything but it has shrunk down a little bit so what we're going to do we're going to try try and get it to get on this piece of wood because these these Sometimes they're quite well behaved, and other times they can be rather cantankerous. So what we're going to do, we're trying to get it onto this piece of wood, because then we can lift it out. Now you can see, 
here we go. Look here, well, you might just be able to get to see it in the box. You can see here, the plates on the back. You can see the plates on the back, and there's plates on the underside as well. And then you can see this gray area, which is, runs all the way down the side. Now, this is like the sides of the abdomen. And you can see how there's this big spread between the plates. Yeah? Now, when a female scorpion is um, gravid, she will literally swell up, and you will see the sides here. To all intents and purposes, this is like um, like a stomach, if you like. Um, and that swelling, it, we're showing the actual skin underneath, away from them, them protective plates. Now, she came in and supposedly was going to be a gravid female. She has actually lost a little bit of weight. She was much bigger than this. She was double this thickness than what she is now. And um, so I don't think she's actually gravid. I think what's happened is, is she was well overfed. She was just very, very overfed. Now, and this is one of the things with scorpions. Scorpions and centipedes do not need feeding anywhere near as much as you first think they do. Again, we can use the same sort of system by allowing them to hunt, these being more of a nocturnal thing. So if you see them moving around at night time, we always come in with a torch and we check our stuff. If you see them hunting around, that's the time to start putting a bit of food in. Now, one good sized roach for this scorpion will keep it going for six weeks or so without any problem at all. So try not to get into the habit of feeding on a regular basis. They just don't need it. Let me get her to move out. Hopefully she'll, she'll show us them sides. You see them sides, look at that. You see, although we're moving her, she's not showing any aggression. She's allowing us to move her about. You can just see that how there you go, she's just holding it now. But you can you can see that how sort of swollen she looks. And this this area here, this is what we're looking at. This grey bit here. All through here. So we don't need to be feeding. Are scorpions too much food? They really don't require it. Put that back in there. All right. What else? All right, we've got one more we'll have a look at. This is another one that's that's come in in a collection, and um, it's interesting to see how different things when they come in, how they've been fed, and how they've been looked after. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean be anything wrong it's just different to how we do things here now this is a pokey now this was an interesting one that i thought would be worth a look here we go if you come over here we can see here this is a young regalis ah Got to be careful because we don't want this uh, running up my arm. So this this is a young a young regalis, and you can see there it's actually got quite a small abdomen. So this guy actually needs a little bit, or girl I should say, needs a little bit of feeding up. I don't know if we can get her to open up. We don't want her to take off. So we might push our luck here if we just touch her toe. She might just disappear. She'll run straight to the camera lady if she does. So what we're going to do, we can, we can see the abdomen here. So if we just get her to literally just tickle her toe, there we go. We just want her to open up a little bit. Nice and gently. Yeah, so you can see the abdomen a little bit better now. And you can also see here that you know, the old adage of a similar size to the carapace just doesn't work. I'll tilt that a little bit. Yeah, you can see it just doesn't work. 
So this spider here, this spider actually needs a bit of feeding up. There you go. She's opening up now. So she's a little, a tiny bit underweight, if anything. And we can try with a bit of food. She probably won't be too keen. But we'll give her a go. We'll see what happens, shall we? We might just be pushing our luck and she disappear across the table. But we'll see. We'll see. Right, what we're going to do is just put this on the front. Then, no, she's not particularly bothered. This is probably due to the fact that we've um, moved her out. You can see her abdomen clearly now. There we go, look at that. We can zoom in on that. And get her. And you can clearly see there how much smaller it is than the carapace. Right. Right. Should we put her back before we lose her forever? And again, once, bearing in mind, this is, this is a spider that's only just come in. And um, as we can see here, if we're careful with our handling, We've got a spider that's not used to our ways. This spider has no idea what we're up to, but she's settled, she's calm. And this is one of the things we try and promote with our spiders. And we can maintain this. We can keep her calm by how we maneuver this piece of wood. And what we're doing now is we're keeping it flat. With new spiders, sometimes we find they are a little light sensitive. This one's not so bad. When we tilt it back this way, this is when we start to get a bit of movement. And sometimes we will see our spider hunker down a little bit. And all she's doing is gripping the wood because her own body weight is starting to move. And she's very relaxed. You see? You see, look, see how she's hunkering down now? So she's gripping the wood and she's holding on because she doesn't want to fall off. So then what we do is we just put her back in like that. Nice and gently. And there we are. Good as gold. No trouble at all. That's going to be a nice beastie spider in the making. Right. Well, hopefully you've got a bit of an idea of of what we're doing, how we how much we're feeding our spiders, and hopefully as well you would have seen that these these spiders don't need feeding as much as you first imagine or your first taught, really. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about feeding. And um, so many of our spiders, we can go weeks without feeding them and they're gonna be perfectly fine. All you must maintain and keep an eye on is when you see your spider, look at the abdomen. That is the key to whether this spider needs feeding. It doesn't matter if it hasn't fed in three months. If its abdomen is still a good size, it's got fresh water, it will be fine. It's not an issue. You know, these guys are designed to actually go long periods without food. So this is the, this is the key. Look at the abdomen and that will tell you what needs to be done. And then you can also then back that up with how your spider is behaving. If you're seeing it out and about hunting and stuff like that, you're getting to see the benefit of your spider. So leave it for a few more days, then feed it. If you want to maintain that kind of behavior, then feed it smaller items of food. If you're gonna, as soon as you see your spider throw in three or four roaches or crickets or whatever, then that spider is gonna fill up on them and then disappear. And we're not gonna see it again for weeks. So feed them, you know, 
small items a little bit more often. Now when it comes to things like our juvies and our slings, we go slightly the other way. We feed our slings on a weekly basis, sometimes twice a week. And that is because slings are growing. They are constantly growing and they need the nourishment to maintain them. As they become juvies, we can slow down a little bit and we can feed them every, every week to every sort of seven to 10 days. Um, all depending on species again, you know. The terrestrial stuff, generally speaking, needs less. The arboreal and, um, well, basically the arboreal stuff generally has a higher metabolism and they like a bit more food. But your own spider may be different, so always check your own spider. Let it tell you when it's hungry. All right. Well, I hope that was useful, and um, you've seen a few different spiders today, and uh, and seen a few different abdomens as well, and hopefully it all makes sense. Right. One other thing, we have just got to announce that unfortunately, we have sold out, sold out of our amazing. 2024 calendars. Now we ended up, uh, we ordered a 50 originally and they sold out literally straight away. So we ordered another 100, they have gone as well. So we are now stopping now. Uh, we've done 150 of them and we're gonna stop. Um, so until next year. So there'll be a brand new one come out next year, but please, please, please do not send me any money. We have no more calendars left. They've all gone. Um, and with that, there is also a fake account running around on Facebook at the moment. Not a very good fake one. No, it's not a very good fake one, but they are offering our calendars as well. So please don't send them any money. You know, always, always, when you're replying to anything, make sure you're replying to the right people. Um, they have set up a page which looks very much like mine. And um, there's also another one out there that is showing our videos. I really don't know what these guys get out of it. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one to me. But anyway. If anyone's an expert on copyright, let us know. <laughs> yeah. So be careful. You know, make sure that you're, um, you're liking the right things and you're subscribing to the right things. Um, it's, it's very easy to see because the ones that are fake are the very they are very poor quality and they're showing videos that they've taken off of they filmed off of their laptops and things like that and then they're putting them out again so just be careful be wary and please don't send them any money you know you won't get it back right then well I hope that was a good one I hope you enjoyed that and don't forget be calm be gentle and love your spiders. And I will see you soon, guys.